Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have my September wrap up. I've uploaded two vlogs related to two of the books I've read and there are others coming. The first book we read in September was Wind Witch by Susan Dennard. This book is the sequel to Truth Witch and follows many of the events and the climaxes within the, that book and I will leave a link to my vlog below where you can go and find out just what I thought of this book. Then I read a poetry collection entitled Oyster Light and I'm most apologetic to say that I can't remember who the author is but I do mention that in my vlog for the lives of Loch Lomora. This poetry collection was astounding. I kept reading it and thinking about the way in which it would sound if I were to go and watch the poet perform it. This really did a lot for me in terms of how the book, how the poems did sound within here. There was a lot about folklore and selkies but also mixing it in with like just the general themes of the human condition if that doesn't sound too pretentious for you. I don't know how to make it sound because I always do struggle to talk about poetry because for me poetry is very much I either like it or I don't like it but I know that I really do appreciate when someone's made an effort to think about the way the words will sound and how they will be performed and what the meanings, it's very syntactical and that's what I enjoy about this poetry. There's a lot of wordplay going on and I really appreciated that. Next I read The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch and this is the first book in the Gentleman's Bastard series, came out in 2007. I have a vlog for this book as well, needless to say I enjoyed it. Next I read English Animals by Laura Kay. <sighs> and I do have a vlog coming for this. Next, I read Chintu by Jennifer Nansumbuga McCumbie. Once again, I have a vlog for this. Next, I read Happiness by Aminata Fauna. This book follows Attila, who is a psychologist from Ghana, and Jean, who is American, both meeting in London on a bridge. <sighs> Attila is in the UK for a conference, but is also here because his niece seems to have gone missing, as well as her son, so he's come here to solve that and fix it. And Jean is putting her life back together, but is also an environmentalist who is looking to stop people from killing urban foxes in London. And it goes back into their past, and it discusses, deals with everything that is going on in society at the moment. We, I believe the foxes are allegory and people can fight me, this might not be the author's intention, but I honestly believe the urban foxes, the coyotes, um, they are allegory for what is going on in Britain at the moment. And no matter how hard we fight and we say they aren't as bad, and no matter how many good arguments we have for against culling foxes, it it doesn't matter because people have made their opinion and they want to stick to it. It talks about how the media can twist things to their own, for their own devices, for their own wants and to make a story that they want to tell. And it also discusses heartbreak and loss. And for such a thin, thin book, it's a marvel. The language is poetic. The story is fantastic. And if you haven't already, then please do go out and find yourself a copy of Happiness because I think that it discusses a lot of topics that we ourselves are very apt at this moment in time for us to read and for us to consume and for us to think about. Next, I read Murder in Piccadilly by Charles Kingston and yeah, I didn't like this book. I did not like this book. Basically, there's this lad called Bobby and he's supposed to be rich, but his uncle's got all the money and there's this girl he wants to marry and really she's actually a bit of a con merchant along with these two men who convinced Bobby that he ought to kill his uncle, right? So then you can guess what's going to happen. Somebody's going to get murdered and you're going to have to solve it, right? Right? No. No. That's not what happens because in the first 150 pages it just shows you these people colluding together and coming to some sort of agreement and then a guy ends up dead. And then for the la final 150 pages a detective comes in and just unravels everything that's happened but knows everything that's happened because why wouldn't he? The reader already knows everything that's happened. And then 
in the introduction, the only reason I kept on going was because the introduction mentioned a twist. <laughs> right, yeah. That twist just didn't do it for me. This book, this book, this book. This book has been kept because I wanted to hold it up here and just do this video. Because I don't like this book. I don't like it. I don't want it in my house anymore. It's going to the charity shop when I'm next there. Because Murder in Piccadilly by Charles Kingston, all I can say is there's a reason it was forgotten. Next I read The Museum of Cathy by Anna Stothard. Stothard? No idea. Anyway, Cathy is a woman who has gone from Britain to Berlin where she is a curator, I believe, of a museum. She also keeps mementos, souvenirs of her life. And throughout this book you are aware of a dark history because of this man who is going to turn up. Yes, so there's a masquerade happening at this Berlin museum where she works in to celebrate a anniversary of the museum. Kathy has escaped here. She is living with her current partner and she just wants to forget about her past. Her past was somewhere on in the east coast of England and it was on the back it described it as feral. I won't describe it as feral, I just say that she doesn't lead the childhood we'd expect and basically she ends, there is a dark secret from her childhood that really ends up impacting her now and leads to this very gradual unpicking of her life to this point. It moves quickly, it moves extraordinarily fast. I did not expect it to move as fast as it does. I thought the book could have been longer, but I actually also really appreciate the writer's brevity because I think that this story is set all over the course of one night. And I think that the moments of tension and action that happen in here had to happen in a short book because I don't know that they would have belie been believed in a longer narrative. I also like the fact that this character's story, this this short 180 pages is the climax of her story. The climax of a dark period in one character's life. And whilst we do see moments of the history and the story that has brought the character to this point, we don't need to see all of that as the reader because we are given enough information that we can understand just what's happening and just what has brought all the characters here. And I really appreciate this writer's prose and we'll be looking out for some of her works in the future because I think that this was just the tiniest bit magnificent. This next book I was supposed to buddy read with Anthony Andrews two months ago and I just told him to go on and read it because I wasn't going to have the time and that is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. This is my 20-something, 30th time of reading this book. I don't know, it's my favourite in the series, it's the first book I ever owned. Oh, also, can someone tell me how to fix my copy? Because I think we're done now. I'd, I'd, I'm not sure I'll get another reread out of this one. And finally, finally kids. A few months ago I did a video in which I asked people to submit to my good friend Margaret Holbrook because she was putting together an anthology. Well, to, I got accepted. Two of my poems are in this anthology and it's called Landscapes. It's printed by M Press Publishing and it's all about landscapes, but much more. It's about it's about the emotions that landscapes evoke. It's about the characters we might necessarily we might associate with these landscapes ourselves. And honestly, I I said this on Twitter last night, I'm quite glad to be printed alongside some rather fantastic, amazing, splendiferous poets. And them's the books. If you've read any of these books, please feel free to discuss them in the comments. However, you know, try to steer clear of spoilers. And um, yeah, I hope you got something from this video. And until next time, that is all.